How's it going you awesome bunch of bakers? Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're making pastéis de nata or Portuguese custard tarts. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. Portuguese custard tarts are quite unique in that they are very light. The custard doesn't contain any cream and it's not very sweet either and the pastry is even slightly salty. This makes them a perfect snack and it is very easy to eat way too many of them. The classic way of serving them is with a little bit of icing sugar and a sprinkling of cinnamon and of course alongside a nice coffee. This is one of those treats that has a long history attached to it but as you know this ain't no history channel. This is just my interpretation of a Portuguese custard tart and I just tried to make it as close to the real deal as I could. And I'm gonna give you all the instructions that you need to make it too and the result here is fantastic. The custard is extremely smooth and light and the pastry case is so crunchy that it shatters as you bite down into it. All great characteristics of a proper pastel. So let's just see what we need to make them. For the pastry, we'll need some plain flour, all-purpose flour, some salt, a bit of water and some soft butter. For the filling, we'll need a bit of flour and a bit of milk to make a roux. We'll need some sugar, water and a cinnamon stick. For making a syrup, we'll need some more milk, some vanilla paste or a vanilla pod if you can afford that and some egg yolks. And that is all when it comes to the ingredients. It's a very simple recipe. As for the equipment, we'll need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a brush, a sieve, a jug, a rolling pin, a couple of pots, a whisk, and perhaps most importantly, we'll need something to bake the pastries in. Past tastes are made using special molds, and I'm not going to invest money into something that we use once or twice. So a regular sized muffin case is perfect for the job. And yes, they won't have the exact same shape as they should, but it doesn't matter they'll still taste as they should. Now here's the size just for reference. Two and a half inches or about six centimeters across and about an inch and a half, almost four centimeters deep. Of course you can make more smaller ones, but I wouldn't make them any bigger. They should be small snack sized tarts. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's start making the pastry. And you already know it's going to be made using the no need method. In a bowl, combine the water, the salt, give it all a good mix, make sure the salt is completely dissolved. This is our best chance to do it. Then add the flour and mix again. Mix until there's no dry flour left. You can finish it by hand just to ensure that everything is nice and smooth. It's not going to be perfectly smooth so don't expect that. And it will be quite sticky but don't worry that's normal. That is all there is to making the dough. Place it back into the bowl, cover it up, leave it to rest for 30 minutes. The gluten will of course develop itself. We're not even going to fold this dough. It will go from a shaggy mass to a stretchy dough in about 30 minutes and then we'll roll it out and turn it into a pastry. It could not be easier. So here's the next step. Dust your table heavily with flour and dust the dough ball as well. Then flatten it in kind of a square shape. Then grab your rolling pin and roll it out to a big square. And don't worry about measurements, just roll it out until it's very very thin. If it's resisting and giving you a hard time, just leave it to rest for a while and then continue rolling. But saying that, it should not resist. We're using weak flour and we didn't need this dough. So it should be very stretchy. Okay, now we can start the buttering process. Take your soft butter and brush two thirds of the dough with it. A quick note on the consistency of the butter. Ideally, you don't want it to be as soft as the one I'm using and definitely not any softer than that because it may just start squeezing out as you roll the pastry. I was a bit impatient, I put it in the microwave. Okay, grab the one third of dough that wasn't brushed with butter and fold it down. Make sure it's nice and straight, pat it down to get rid of any large air bubbles. Then take the remaining loose third of dough and fold it up. We have our first three layers. Now we can call this a pastry. Right, to continue, heavily dust with flour again. You really don't want this to stick. What you want to do from now is roll this rectangle into a larger rectangle. Again, don't worry about the size, make it as flat as you can. If it's resisting again, just leave it to rest for a few minutes and then continue. But if you manage to roll it out, let's continue the buttering process. And once again, we want to cover two thirds of the surface with butter. And repeat the same steps as earlier. Take the uncovered part of pastry, fold it over and then fold over the other side. Now we have nine layers and from here it would be impossible to roll it out anymore. So we're going to wrap it up in some cling film and leave it in the fridge to chill for a while. This will make the gluten relax and make it easier to work with. And 30 minutes of chilling will be more than enough for this. Okay, it's been about half an hour, now we can finish the pastry. Use plenty of flour, it's your best friend in this recipe. Dust the pastry generously, then grab your rolling pin and roll it out to a big square or a big rectangle. Doesn't really matter, as long as it has straight edges and as long as it's nice and thin. You can straighten out by hand once you're finished. 
We need to butter this pastry once more, but this time butter the whole surface. Don't leave nothing uncovered. In order to make it nice and even, nice and neat, nice and perfect, trim the top and the bottom edges. This pizza cutter is a great tool for the job. If you're gonna use a knife, don't mess up your table. Okay, next up we need to roll this up into a nice tight roll. Start on the bottom. You want to gently fold over a tiny edge. The smaller and tighter you make this, the better. It's not easy with those sausage fingers. All you need to do now is keep rolling it nice and evenly. Don't rush, take your time. Once you get to the end, you can pinch the seam together just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. Make sure it's nice and straight. Now wrap it up in cling film because we need to chill this one more time. If we try to divide it now, it would make a mess. So chilling it is essential. And you can easily make this way ahead of time if you want to. Just keep it in the fridge until you need it. But chilling it for as little as one hour should be enough. And whilst it's chilling, let's make the custard. It starts with a paste made of flour and milk. This is going to help thicken the custard. Combine the flour and milk and then whisk until smooth. Leave it on the side until later. Next, grab a pan and combine the milk with the vanilla paste. Set it down on medium to high heat and leave it until it starts boiling. As soon as it comes up to a boil, take it off. And as soon as you take it off, whisk it into the paste that we just made. Doing it this way prevents the custard from becoming lumpy. It would have been easier to just combine all these ingredients in a pot and bring them up to a boil, but the mix would not turn out smooth. Okay, next up, let's make the syrup. In another pot, combine the sugar, the cinnamon stick, and the water. And we also need to bring this up to a boil. Once the syrup starts bubbling, leave it to cook for a few seconds and then remove the cinnamon stick. If you don't have cinnamon sticks, you can just use little powdered cinnamon. Okay, combine this mix with the mix that we made earlier. At this point, it'll be pretty hot. If we add eggs to this, they might scramble. So we should let this cool down a little bit before we add the egg yolks. 66 degrees is not too bad, but I'll just leave it to cool down to slightly below that. And that'll be less than 140 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. And don't worry about those cinnamon sticks floating around, we'll pass them through a sieve. Okay, once the mix has cooled down, add the final ingredient, the egg yolks, and then whisk them in until everything's nice and smooth. You can also make this custard a couple days ahead of time, leave it in the fridge. Just make sure you pass it through a sieve to get rid of all the sticks and stuff. I like to pour it straight into the jug, so it's ready to be used. Okay, let's cover this and leave it until we need it. We can move on with finishing the pastry cases now. Get the pastry out of the fridge, trim the edges, and then divide the pastry into 12 equal pieces. And you know the drill. First, cut it in half, then cut each half in half, then cut each quarter into three equal pieces. If you start cutting for one end and expect to get 12 in the end, it's not gonna work. This is the best way of getting equal sized pieces. And there you have it, we have made little pastry pucks with many many layers. Next, let's prep the case by brushing it with butter. This is probably not totally necessary, but I just did it just in case. Too much work has gone into this to end up in disappointment. Now place the pieces of pastry into the muffin tray, and here comes the fun part. Using your thumbs, you want to mold the pastry until it fits the tin perfectly. Be gentle, don't tear a hole in the bottom, because the custard will leak through it and burn, it is quite delicate, quite soft, so just go slowly, go gradually, press it gently, work your way around in a circle, and try to go in the same direction, be it clockwise or anti-clockwise. If you start going the opposite way, layers of pastry might start flaking off. And I know that's exactly what I did just now, but don't do as I do, do as I say. It is quite a simple process, it just takes a little bit of time and patience. That's the first one done, let's keep going. Try to make the bottom as thin as you can because it takes the longest time to bake. There is just enough custard mix to fill up all of them. And don't fill them up all the way, leave about half a centimeter from the rim, that's about 0.2 of an inch. Okay, these bad boys are ready for the oven, and they must be baked at a very high temperature, 250 degrees Celsius, far off, that's 482 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll bake them for around 10 to 12 minutes. You won't see that custard starting to char on top. It should have little burn spots on it. You can turn the tray around halfway to the bake to make them color evenly. And if you think that 250 degrees Celsius is a bit high for a custard tart, that's exactly how they should be baked. In fact, they should be baked at an even higher temperature for a shorter time. But my oven doesn't get any hotter than that, so it is what it is. But this is what they should look like when they're done. You can remove them from the muffin case straight away. They will keep their shape. Leave them on the rack to cool down and enjoy whilst they're still warm. But they'll still be good when they're cold too. And that's how you make pastes de nata, or some little super crunchy pastry smooth custard tarts. I can't stress this enough, 
Just look at that pastry. I should have recorded the sound. It was like a mini lightning strike. These bad boys are awesome, and trust me, once you make them, you'll fall in love. All you need to do is get into the kitchen and start baking. So what do you think this recipe? Have you tried these tarts before? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.